Okay. Hi everyone, we are back to Requirements Engineering and today the first module we'll talk about is the general process model. So we have spoken about what the process in Requirements Engineering looks like and today I want to give you a little background on when you need to develop a model for whatever development process, how you can go about this. So, topic, generic process model. And whenever we develop a process, we will usually have people involved. We need people to get things done. In order to do that more efficiently, what we want to do is assign them roles. So we want to assign them responsibilities, specific responsibilities. So one building block for our process models are roles and responsibilities. Then the second one is for these people to do anything, they will need some kind of tools. And that used to be nails and hammers in the book, good, good old days. These days it's things like databases, drawing programs, and maybe uh, a modeling environment. So whatever tools they need, that can include things like PowerPoint or Word documents, not endorsing any specific company, it's just because their names are so prevalent. Um, a database or drawing tools. And there can be many more, like any type of IDE, integrated development environment, all of those. That's our second building block. But what are these people going to do with these tools? So uh, the next part is we need to define what their work results are supposed to look like. And this is what we call artifacts. You've heard the term artifacts before. You remember they are not what Indiana Jones found in the jungle. They are more definitions of a work result. And we'll talk about them in more detail later on. The fourth block is how are we gonna how how are these people gonna develop this using that? So the first part fourth part is the activities or methods. And what we get at the center is a process model. Anything missing? Let's see. These people are going to get that done going this way using those tools. All right, let's get to work. There is a thing missing, there is a thing missing. Help me. By when are they gonna get done? There is one last element and that's milestones. So this is number five for your timeline planning. Because the plural here, artifact, suggests that we probably need several of those and Maybe some of those are the input for later ones, and that means we need an order. And the easiest way how we can identify which of those we can develop in parallel and which of those need to be developed sequential is by defining milestones for them. So when these people know in which order they need to develop that via these steps using those tools, we're pretty good for our process model. Let's do a little example for that. Let's say we have to develop hmm, the quality requirements for our system.
we're gonna assign a role for that and that is our QA person and the responsibility is draft quality requirements let quality requirements be reviewed and get quality requirements signed off. Those are the responsibilities. Now, how are they going to develop the quality requirements? There are several methods that we can use for that. For example, there is a framework by Professor Martin Glunz from the University of Zurich in Switzerland. He has developed an NFR framework. Sorry, NFR stands for non-functional requirements, of which the quality requirements are a part. So as a method, we're going to use the NS NFR framework by Martin Glintz. Published at the International Conference on Requirements Engineering in 2007. This is a little forward pointer. We're going to talk about that in a few weeks. But so we have defined a method that we're going to use to develop these quality requirements. Tools. Hmm. So for writing down quality requirements, there are several options. We can go for a Word document or for any type of desktop publishing document if we decide we want mainly natural language requirements. The advantage is this is pretty easy. The disadvantage is natural language text documents are a little harder to manage in the sense of if I want to sort the requirements according to priority, if I want to find the different categories, if I want to find, for example, all reliability requirements of a high priority, then that is certainly not an easy tool to use. So instead, we may want to opt for a requirements database. A very simple version for a database can even be just a spreadsheet. So simplest version that is still searchable spreadsheet. And you would be surprised if you walked out into industry and found how many companies of a considerable size still do their requirements management just in spreadsheets. So while at some point in this course we will look at fancier database tools for requirements specifically, just know that a lot of companies work pretty well with spreadsheets. Last but not least, milestone. We already know responsibilities are get the thing drafted, get it reviewed and then get it signed off. So we do want to define several milestones for that. Our final milestone, say, is going to be end of June. And then from there we go backwards, needs to get signed off. Huh. The person who needs to sign off on that stuff is often gone for a few days at a time. They may or may not have good internet access. So maybe let's give it two weeks to get that last step done. So we need it reviewed by mid of June. And that means we need them drafted by end of May. This is a pretty high level planning. <laughs> I'm telling you something like, oh, middle of that month will be fine. Usually you will just set a date. But now we're all covered for developing our quality requirements. And this model is so generic that you can plan pretty much anything with it. I'm tempted to say you can even plan your next birthday party with it. The question is, 
Is that really the way you want to plan your birthday party? But you would certainly have some artifacts, like there's going to be food, there's going to be invitations, there may be a guest list, and there may be some uh, games you want to play or something like that. And there will be activities to get to these work results. There will be roles, maybe you have a couple of helpers. And there will be tools that you use, and you need milestones to get that done. Because if you forget to invite people before the party, then mm, not too many are going to show up. Okay. Silly example, taking it pretty far. But the point I'm trying to make with that is for pretty much any process in your life, especially in your work life, you will need a process model if you want to get it done in a systematic way and if you want to be able to rely on the work results. And therefore, stick this in your back pocket. It's not only useful in requirements engineering, but all across the board.